We've already heard tonight from two musicians, Patti Smith and Paul Weller, who've both had a great deal of influence on a number of contemporary performers. But there's one piece of music from the early 1960s which has had a profound influence on everything from dance music to electronica to rock. Now, it's not in itself a piece of pop, nor is it a piece of jazz. It's actually a core example of what's called minimalism, and it sounds like this. This is In C by the American composer Terry Riley. At first, you might think it sounds a little odd, but it paved the way for music like this, this, and even this. Terry Riley's In C is a seminal piece of music which set a new template for freedom of expression in music. To explore it with us today, we've put together our very own culture show, Supergroup. They're all fans of In C, but have never played it before until now. First up, we have Will Gregory, the male half of electronic dance act Goldfrapp. Next, Paul Hartnell from Orbital, widely considered to be among the most influential techno bands ever. The man behind some of Madonna's greatest hits, award-winning record producer William Orbit. And lending a hand on the piano, the rising young composer Dai Fujikura. And completing our supergroup, some members of the BBC Concert Orchestra. And we hope to demonstrate how In C has become a backbone to so much modern music. So, what are their first impressions of this unusual piece? It's difficult to know if it's better to play than it is to listen to. It's a bit like don't knock it till you try it, I'd say. Maybe harder to do than you think. Written in San Francisco in 1964, allegedly under the influence of mind-altering substances, In C placed Terry Riley at the forefront of experimental music. Now, one night on the bus, driving into uh, to work, I heard the whole thing just in my head, just enveloped, like uh, almost the whole piece of, of NC developed. And uh, when I showed it to uh, the first few friends I showed it to, they, everybody kind of laughed and thought it was really a silly idea. A silly idea or not, NC is a relatively simple piece of music to play. There are only 53 bars, all in the key of C. The musicians move at their own speed, repeating each segment as many times as they want before proceeding to the next and all the time there's a pulse laid down. It sounds like this shouldn't work, but it does. And of course, every performance is unique. We're finding the piece now about halfway through. We're on about segment 27, 28, 29, 30, something like that. If you listen already, there's about five or diff six different segments being played simultaneously. Some at faster tempi, some at slower tempi, but all based around that fundamental pulse. So something quite wild going on with Alistair here on the vibraphone. Bit of a feature. Equally, Ileana on the flute, staying in the background. Some kind of scrubbing running notes there in the violin. Similarly, little kind of chuffy moments from the cello. We've got a wonderfully uh, in keeping with the period instrument here, early 60s organ and our Farfisa organ, Will Gregory, just doing one little two-note motif. Touch of guitar texture here in the shape of William Orbit. Much more sustained over there now, so you can hear how the whole kind of colour and nuance of the sound has shifted. And that is what happens endlessly. It's a bit like a, the musical equivalent of a lava lamp. Let's see if we can get a crescendo from everyone now, because you're allowed to do that. Down the other side.
and so on. So there's this complete freedom and fluidity with it, more, let's face it, than in most types of music making. And of course also, by the very nature of its freedom, it can take 10 minutes to perform or an hour. And it's this fluidity, and in particular the groundbreaking use of repetition, that other musicians from different genres picked up on. Some influences are very specific. The Who based their song Baba O'Reilly on In C. And Terry Riley himself went on to collaborate with the Velvet Underground. But in contemporary pop, it's electronic dance music that most clearly shows the influence of Riley's mind-altering score. I got into minimalism around the sort of early 90s and that, and that influenced our second album. It's, it's that thing of working with little tiny segments of music and letting them run and then sort of improvising the structures along the way. I think, you know, a lot of, certainly a lot of early, earlier sort of dance music and that sort of thing I, I feel was based on that, probably because of the sort of sequences and things, you know. So, after their first taste of playing in C, what do our supergroup think of it now? I was really enjoying the uh, surprises that came up, you know, the, the, the waves of from, from over there, then over there, then over there, which um, at the same time what I wasn't doing wasn't so demanding that I, was, I couldn't enjoy what I was hearing. So it was a good com combination of experience, really. You start to hear all sorts of things, and when you investigate that kind of very expanded space, um, you pick up nuances that you don't get in other music. It puts you in a sort of trance-like space, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting because I was just playing one note, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's sort of, I, you know, I think I was playing the most minimal part of the whole thing, you know, just sat there hammering away. Some people don't get minimalism, but I think what this piece shows is that the ideas behind it can be inspirational to all kinds of musicians. So, next time you're on the dance floor, give a little wave to Terry Riley. And in the meantime, how on earth do you end a piece like this? Well, in the true spirit of In C, each player stops when they feel like it. It's suddenly very quiet, so hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to get the full live effect of Terry Riley's In C, you can hear me and the BBC Concert Orchestra perform it at the Queen Elizabeth Hall in London on Wednesday night. Next week, we put contemporary art to the test. Is it now just really a laughing stock? Plus the great Elmer Leonard on how to write a thriller and how singing puppets are meant to get 20-somethings back into theatre. Thanks for watching.